Hi everybody, hey again, this is a new interview of uh, with ICC trainers and this time we have the pleasure of having Ludmila Frolova, our trainer in Russia and many other countries by the way, uh, and she is giving us a few minutes uh, today so we can share ideas and, and have a nice conversation. So welcome Ludmila and thanks for being with us and make yourself available in these busy times. Uh, Yes, hello everybody. Thank you for the opportunity for me to uh, to talk about uh, my experiences as trainer. Many, many thanks, Ludmila. It's a, it's a pleasure. And just, I, I say that these are busy times because we are really near to the new International Coaching Congress to be celebrated in Moscow in from 19 to 21 of May. So, and you are, you are the, the leader there, so uh, just wondering how is it going? What, how it's? Um, what can you tell us about the Congress? That it's it's an amazing event, by the way. Yes, it's an amazing event, and I myself has participated in uh, three of those uh, in other countries, in Portugal and in Dominican Republic and in Spain in 2013. Yes, and I was so much inspired uh, uh, by that that uh, when there was a question of another place for the next Congress, I suggested uh, it could be in Moscow. And uh, my team in Moscow, ICC team from ICC Russia Association, supported me in that. So uh, I'm sure it will be a very great event. Although, of course, it was very difficult for us. In Russia, ICC is also uh, only about uh, two years. Yes. Uh, no, not even two, we, re, we didn't reach two years yet. So there are not so many uh, coaches, uh, 150 uh, or maybe some more. And uh, we are, um, I myself living in Denmark, so, my, so I'm not so much in Moscow, only when I hold trainings. So the most of the work is made by uh, a team who is uh, pres president, first president of, of ICC Russia, Andrei Weber, and uh, Marina Galitsky, who is uh, vice, pre vice president and who is a partner with me. They are making trainings in Russia. She's an organizer and market, uh, market owner. Yes. yes. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this will be a great event, basically because of... Um, as coaching is about perspectives, and these kind of congresses that ICC is running every year allows other trainers from all around the world to be present and share perspectives to a local audience and international audience too. So this enriches uh, anyway uh, the, the the experience of yeah. anyone attending to the congress. And Ludmila, yes. ICC is new there, but how it's coaching in Russia? How it's, how how you see coaching in Russia nowadays? Um, I was surprised how many coaching in Russia it is, uh, and Russia is a big word. I mean, uh, I know how it's in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, and uh, through Internet, I know that there is a lot also in other big cities. Yes. But in Moscow, coaching is a very um, um, a popular uh, technology, and uh, many people are consolidated from different schools. Yeah. So the professional life of coaching is very alive. So, for example, there is a professional association of Russian-speaking coaches who is making every week during several years, every week make an event in coaching where people gather and make demonstrations and uh, uh, give uh, feedback, discuss uh, and uh, I was invited there, and uh, coaches from ICF are invited. So from different schools, uh, people make this, uh, and I think it's very good, uh, this uh, life of coaching. Absolutely, yes. And always when there is a chance to connect with people from different schools, then again, it's better for everyone. As many, many ideas, many maps can be shared and... and and yeah, and help others, right? Um, Absolutely. So, uh, what you were telling about perspectives uh, in coaching? Yes, I'm sure that this uh, congress event will be 
a presentation of different perspectives and different also views and we are happy that there will be uh, trainers presenting from different countries. Uh, ICC trainer from USA, from Sweden, from Japan, uh, from Spain and uh, ICC trainer from Belarus and uh, uh, an ICC trainer who is uh, going to be a trainer this summer from uh, Vilnius, uh, from uh, uh, Litauen, uh, yeah. so, and uh, other people. And of course, first of all, Joseph O'Connor will be presenting there. So we are happy to uh, a kind of uh, uh, give a possibility to both Russian professional coaching community and also business community to meet Joseph O'Connor, to hear him, to learn uh, him more with his ideas and his perspectives. Yes, well, uh, th this is great. This is great. I'm happy to hear that. And let me, I, I would like to shift now our conversations a little bit to yourself so people can know you a little bit more. Um, you, you are an expert actually on NLP hypnosis and other uh, human development processes. And you have a lot of experience really on that area. So how did you approach to coaching and what was the, the value you found on it to your, for your practice? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I have my company, in the training company in Denmark. Uh, this year it will be jubileum 20 years. So I right. was making a lot of 20 years, yes, of my uh, company. So I was making a lot of trainings in NLP after I myself became, became a certified NLP trainer in USA, in the NLP center there. So, and uh, I began to hear uh, the word of coaching. Um, it was a kind of more and more heard in Denmark because I, I was living in Denmark and I am there and uh, making trainings there. So. Uh, but I was uh, telling to myself and sometimes to others, oh, it's just NLP, I know it's coaching, they call it coaching, but it's just NLP, more business oriented and so on. But uh, I always uh, like to implement some new things and I was always doing uh, people who came to get uh, this training another time just to repeat for themselves, always said it's never the same. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there they came a point when I felt uh, I want now to know what coaching is. And I knew that uh, uh, Joseph O'Connor was in Denmark in 2003 presenting uh, ICC coaching. But I was so busy with my trainings that I, I didn't uh, participate in that event. Yes. Only in 2007. I started to look for a school of coaching, certi certified uh, school, and I chose ICC. I was looking very attentively and I liked the program. I liked the uh, way of certification. I liked, and also because Joseph O'Connor for me was always an author I wanted to read. I like his style, which is very uh, clear, simple, and very deep. Mm, uh, and um, uh, that's why I used ICC and I only again and again was more and more happy for I chose the right thing for me and I of course wanted to be a trainer mm -hmm. and um, that uh, that I am Russian and no Russian language was very helpful for me because then it was a possibility for me to come into the trainer community and to bring with me this country yeah, and in this way, uh, support this uh, uh, um, this uh, g general uh, idea and vi uh, vision of co of ICC coaching the world. Well, that that's that's really re really nice, and um, and and I think many of who are listening will be will feel identify about that about how they they choose and how to choose a coaching training. So I, you you mentioned territories and mentioned lands. So I'm taking the metaphor from NLP that were map that plays with map and territory as a way to explain how we build our, our, our human experience. You certainly went to a lot of territories 
last in the last years you as you said you were in Denmark then Russia then other countries like Ukraine that you are opening and other and other ones so how these enrich your map as a coach that this of going through all many countries and knowing people how did it enrich your map as a coach uh, it is very enriching. You know, it's not only every country is a map. Uh, it's uh, every person is a map. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, and uh, it means uh, different. It means uh, unique. And this is very much enriching. I couldn't uh, work so much uh, again and again uh, if it was the same. Uh, 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 um, exactly that it is different and people experience things in a different ways and have different ideas and have different expressions of themselves this is very inspiring and uh, this, this enriches me uh, uh, and it's just a feeling that there are so many ways of uh, finding solutions ways yeah. of finding connections, possibility to, possibilities to communicate, uh, so, uh, and languages. Although people talk in different languages, it's always um, possibility to make connections and find uh, how you can understand each other. Uh, in some way we are very different and there are some very deep uh, things where people recognize something in each other. Um. Indeed, yes, I, I agree with that, I agree. Uh, so, could you say that it's important for a coach to to get as many different clients as possible in order to extend the reach of their practice to gain deeper understanding? Uh, because I'm, sometimes the coaches focus on a specific niche or style of people or style of things. But so, could you say that uh, broadening your your scope is it uh, really positive for a coach? Um, you know, I was trying to um, bring myself to this idea, which is rather often um, popul popularized, that to promote yourself as a coach, you need to find your niche and you need to hold focus, and uh, I'm sure this is right. And in some way, it's rather difficult for me because um, this uh, broad view uh, for me is uh, my natural approach because behind the differences which are more on the surface, I see, uh, I like to see deeper what is the essence uh, of the possibilities for the person and how the person himself can find the way uh, using my energy of my attention, my support as a coach, and my uh, interest uh, questions uh, as a coach uh, to help the person to move uh, to the desired uh, result, to the desired outcome the person wants to produce. Yes. Yes, I agree with that too. And I think... I'm not sure what, what, what's your opinion, but everything is about balance then between focus and a broader scope. Uh, yeah. It's, it's about sure. that. So, sure. uh, Ludmila, you, you are, we recently had a great news in, in ICC about you going and working <coughs> in Ukraine. And the, this is especially a happy news because of... Um, what we understand as a difficult situation in Ukraine and the way we know that coaching can help people in situations like the people in Ukraine is living. Maybe not all, but many of them uh, are having difficult times. So, could you say, what can you share about how coaching is useful in countries like Ukraine, given their social or political conditions that there are now there? Uh, coaching by itself is not going into uh, the things as it is political conditions or some yeah. other, not in the uh, context, but coaching is helping a person to develop uh, an inner um, author, an inner leader of himself. So each person using coaching 
uh, has a possibility to find a strength inside, inside himself, to stand uh, uh, fast on his own feet, to have balance uh, in himself, and to trust himself and uh, in this way uh, also be a support for the people around. And this is what is the power of coaching, how I see it. To help the person uh, go from a kind of victim position where a person experiences, oh, I can do nothing. This is this political or social or some other conditions uh, help a person to go to an author position, a yes. position of a leader inside himself uh, where a kind of grown-up person where a person is taking responsibility for his own choices, for his own decisions, and make the most right decisions from himself of, and f uh, supporting people around uh, as much as the person can. Yes, yes, and well, this is, uh, as you say, it's part of the essence of the coaching process, right? It's despite any other context or things, that's that's the essence, and it, it's very good. And I understand it can make a difference uh, everywhere, despite as you say any context. So, um, have you what changes have you seen in people through the that went through the coaching process? What what significant changes you saw on them that can share with us? What what's what caused you the most impress impression or the, or the, the, the uh, uh, I think the most important changes are of two kinds. One is the um, results th which are also evidence of coaching. Mm. People produce some very important results. Uh, another, which is uh, maybe even more important, uh, first of all, is uh, these changes inside people. And already during four days of training, people tell that they begin to feel much more confident about themselves, uh, get rid of uh, uh, limiting um, beliefs, yeah. limiting thoughts, because they realize that it's only their own thoughts that limit themselves so much. And then they feel they can reach everything they uh, really want and set as a goal. So people tell that they um, are happy to realize that they can set their own goals, focus on them, and uh, this is a part of the work. And then they um, clean these limitations and feel they can go to their goals uh, in a much more easier way. Easier way. Mm, yes. Uh, so the changes what I uh, was uh, watching uh, on people, that they become much more happy, uh, look uh, different. During four days, people look different because hmm. they are smiling much more, their eyes are shining much more, and they tell about the steps they are doing. Because every evening in the training, people give their a kind of feedback for the day. What did they learn? How they they became stronger through learning coaching? And uh, reading this, I can uh, also not only see myself uh, how people change, but also follow how their own thoughts changes and attitudes to themselves, to their possibilities, yes. and uh, to the uh, goals they want to reach. So, Ludmila, there are many people now interested in becoming a coach uh, for different reasons. Uh, just what you say makes a, a difference for anyone, despite they want coaching as a profession. But what could you say are the main advantages now about becoming a coach? What, what, what's the biggest benefit of becoming a coach these days? I think, first of all, it is a profession which is becoming, and I'm sure it will more and more become um, a profession which is uh, needed, a profession which will be more and more requested, because there is a need of uh, coaching. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, because uh, this time, uh, not only Ukraine or uh, countries put it in some difficult political conditions, but also in all countries in the world, there are bigger challenges, both at work, in families, in uh, social life. So people need uh, uh, coaching uh, and coaches to support them uh, to uh, orient in these situations and to find out that they have resources in themselves, that they can um, come in contact with these resources, know them and uh, use them much better. Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, interrupted. Uh, uh, to use these resources much better and in this way um, coaching is a profession which will be more and more requested. Also in Russia and in Ukraine, I'm sure uh, in that. And we are doing a lot for that. ICC is doing a lot for that, uh, bringing coaching in many countries. Yes, we, we can say that we are an organization that is present in five continents, in more than 25 countries present permanently, and delivering more than 120, 130 trainings a year. So yes, we, we are um, doing a lot of that. And not all the people want to become a coach uh, in terms of working like, as that, but they improve their lives as leaders, as, as managers, as executives. Um, so yes, yes, we, we are doing a lot, and you are doing a lot. <laughs> by uh, absolutely, because uh, a coaching gives a new style of thinking. Yes. And that's why not only the people who want to be professional coaches learn it, but also a lot of people who want to uh, use coaching style of thinking uh, for themselves, b both at their work, at their private life, in communication, because this is uh, a style of, first of all, positive thinking, which is focusing on the possibilities, on the resources, and make people much more happy uh, and healthier. Indeed. It also yeah, made, makes impact in physical health. Yes, and th that that's, um, uh, connects to another question, because coaching is being used a lot in business. So how coaching you think it's making a difference today among executives that are using coaching? Yes, I'm working uh, as executive coaching a lot yes. and uh, meeting people uh, who has uh, very uh, intense situations with their work. I would uh, say that those people are so much qualified in what they are doing that uh, my experience is that it's not so uh, much they need help in their professional work, uh, but they usually very often, uh, after some time, begin to talk about their personal issues, yes. uh, needing help in this. Uh, and when uh, they, they, their issues are released, they get some insights, um, they feel they have a lot of new resources uh, to find the solutions for their work, almost them, themselves uh, um, not needing a coach in this. And also, uh, during this personal work, they get a lot of insights already in the process how they can implement what they ha has found out about themselves uh, for getting better in their work as executives. Yes, well that, that's, uh, that, that's great to, to hear because it, it makes a lot of difference in organizations having ex executive coaches. We have a lot of experience on that, of positive cases. So Ludmila, we, we are uh, reaching to the last question. It's a usual question I do. Um, if you could have the magic lamp and the genius appears, uh, suddenly. What three things would you ask him about coaching uh, for the next five years? What things you would like to happen if the genius appears and gives you whatever you ask? Uh, so that I could not only learn uh, about this but also do something or what do you mean? Yes, make some changes. 
Yes, what, what things you would like to see in coaching from here uh, five years mm -hmm. ahead? What, what <clears throat> things you would like to change or yes. to happen? Or? Yeah, yeah. I would like uh, to see the things that coaching is coming um, much more in the people's life, uh, coming in education. Also, uh, from from very early age, that uh, uh, they are teachers, the pedagogues, uh, will uh, have uh, the knowledge and practice of coaching so that they communicate already with children in a coaching way. Uh, then uh, pe uh, people will grow up with much more inner freedom to use their resources to open for their talents. And of course I would uh, like to see coaches in each company so that companies would flourish and people would have balance in companies between uh, their way of being there, communicating with colleagues, uh, and also the way of working and uh, making uh, their, uh, their performances, uh, much more great performances at work. Uh, and uh, also in political life, that uh, coaching, which is uh, in a huge amount of um, attention paying to values so that uh, uh, coaching will bring values uh, which are healthy uh, in all ways, uh, not only physical health but healthy thinking and uh, humanistic um, ideas coaching will bring also a politics so that the whole uh, life uh, will um, change uh, globally and people will live happily and yeah, it sounds very I, uh, idealistically. <laughs> no, but no, I, I think it's it's um, it's a way of pers it's a matter of persistence and to to just as you say as to focus and to go through through that vision. I mean, it, it's it's achievable totally. Yes, it's a direction in which uh, I want to 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 look and in which we are working because coaching in its methodology is standing. Uh, on humanistic psychology, yes. uh, which has these values in itself. <clears throat> yes, and we as coaches know maybe better than anyone else that huge goals are the ones who set and build the future. So it's a matter of committing with what we want to happen. Yes, sure. And just uh, uh, start with small steps uh, and you know where we are going, so we reach the things in the time we can. Absolutely. Ludmila, I want to thank you a lot for these minutes we shared together. I really appreciate your, your time and, and this conversation. And so I just leave you the final words if you want to say anything else to who's listening, who's watching this interview, uh, with, again, my deepest a gratefulness for your work and, and commitment with coaching and ACC and everything you do every day. Yes, I just want to uh, say the words of gratitude. I'm very happy that I met uh, ICC and uh, a part of this community. I'm very thankful for Joseph O'Connor and Andrea Lages who are so much supporting all trainers uh, in their development and growth. Uh, and uh, supporting in promotion of coaching uh, globally. Uh, so I'm very happy to be part of that uh, and uh, in this way feel that I can bring my uh, input uh, in this uh, very, very useful work. So thank you, just thank you very much. And to all my, to everybody, to all my students uh, which uh, bring their um, wishes uh, and share with me and with each other so we all are together building a better world step by step uh, with uh, our commitment to that. Thank you. Thanks, Ludmila. Until next time then. Many thanks. Bye.